Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, the last session was going so long. I'm sorry. No problem. I am Jenny and I'll be here to moderate. Perfect. Um, any plans to do breakout rooms or anything for you guys? Or are you just, just a panel talking? And we won't, uh, Michelle and I won't have breakout rooms, but um, will it be possible to share our screen? I don't know if you're still there, Jenny. Yeah, I am right here. Um, oh, yeah, great. I can, uh, who would, I, I can make you co-host. So that would give you opportunity to share your screen. Do you want that, that option, yeah. Jenny? Yeah, that'd be great, thanks. There you go. Can I also have that option, uh, Lindsay? Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? You should have a message that says your co-host now. Lindsay, do you like my new home studio? I've I've put a lot of work into it. Been been really busy this over the weekends with the renovations and everything. I love it. Like you Thank got a you. room with a view. Yep. Got my, <laughs> my, my, uh, my tropical plant is here. It can, it's very soothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It looks good. Michelle and Jamie, it's wonderful to reconnect with you. I, uh, I, I still think really fondly and excitedly about our, uh, our, our session in February. So it's great to reconnect. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thanks. I had a chance to listen to a couple of your podcasts after the March regroup. Um, yeah, great job. Thank you, and thanks for listening. Yeah, I'm always impressed with people who <laughs> have the time to do those things. It's good. Thank you, I'm having a blast. And uh, we've got, uh, Lindsay and I have a colleague, uh, Dave Schmidow, who who says he, he started a podcast so he could set aside time to talk to really interesting people. And this is what I'm finding too, is it's, uh, it's becoming so exciting to, to seek out and, and to connect with people who normally I wouldn't, uh, I learned so much. So thanks. Thanks again for listening. I'm really excited about the project. Yeah. So Lindsay, are you going to be, talking for like the first 15 minutes and then we'll sort of give a snapshot preview of the website is that what we're going to do and then just want to make sure we all feel good about the plan whatever it is michelle and i are really flexible we can talk for four four minutes five minutes or whatever you want <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go for about 15 minutes go through the the steps and then um I'm not sure then if, if next you guys want to go and then we use the rest of the time having Brad and Liv uh, open up the discussion. Does yeah, we can, Brad? We, yeah, we can focus on, you know, you or self and then Michelle and I can transition and say, and how can we apply that into sort of supporting yourself and your colleagues and your students? And then, yeah, then have that round up by Brad and Ed would be great. Can I just double check that I have the right names for this presentation? There's Lindsay, Michelle, Brad, Jamie, and Livia. Is that right? And is Ed involved as well in presenting a portion? 
Oh, no. sorry. I said Ed. I didn't. I think okay. just because his name was on the screen. Okay. No, that's okay. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have the wrong name. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jamie and others, etc. I'm going to be here, but I'm going to be doing the other sessions. So I'll be trying to monitor as well and make sure that uh, it's the recording's already on. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah. So thanks, Randy. Break a leg. Have fun. Thank you. Hey, Liv. Sorry, I was in another meeting all day. Have to hop back in after. We have four hundred seventy thousand dollars to spend for a mentorship program, so that's pretty exciting. Planning it all day. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Lindsay. Jamie. Michelle. Nice to see you. Hi. And Brad, Brad's there. Hi, Brad. Brad's here. <laughs> Good to see you. You too. Is that a real background, Brad, or is that a? Well, I was saying to Lindsay, yeah, I've I've just finished. Uh, uh, I can't think of how many weekends of renovation. So this is my view now and uh, uh, I hope I hope you all like it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Moving on up. <laughs> Lindsay, we may have you uh, coming to speak to our mentorship. I have to talk to you. I was telling them about how you did the keynote for this and I said, we have to have the whole adult if you want to teach the whole child so we have a budget we have to figure out if that's enough <laughs> i love it absolutely oh my goodness i'm so i'm yeah absolutely um as everybody is popping on too um welcome welcome we're gonna get started in just a couple seconds did you want me to start directly at 12 30 or would you like to wait a couple minutes yeah okay yeah that works okay sounds good All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. I am pleased to introduce today um, a group of people that we have to the 20, to 2021 BC Digital Learning Symposium. Today we'll be listening to a session called, called Define You and Wellbeing BC. We have Lindsay, Michelle, Brad, Jamie, and Livy, Livia here with us today. So I'll turn it over to you and thank you. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, everybody. Thank you so much. Before we jump in, Give yourself whatever form of celebration you got to get. Maybe it's a pat on the back. Maybe it's a hug. Maybe it's a yes, because you are here for you. And I think, oh, I'm loving it. Look at that. Because that is essential, right? And that is really what we are getting at today in this workshop is to define who you are, because who you are is so essential. That is who shows up, that is who is there, you know, in the classroom, on the screen, wherever you are. That's the thing that's constant is who you are. So what we're gonna dive into today is how do we do that? How do we love who we are in all, all capacities, right? In the known, in the unknown, how do we do that? And so I'm gonna kick us off. My name is Lindsay Titus, I'm so excited to be here. I'm gonna kick it off with the six steps you can take to define who you are. Uh, Jamie and Michelle are then gonna follow up with talking about uh, Wellbeing BC, and we're gonna finish out with Livia and Brad rounding out our discussion on how do we take those steps forward then? How do we take this knowledge we have and make it actionable? Because we know knowledge is great, but we gotta do something with it. So we are gonna get started. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. And we are going to get going. All right, quick thumbs up. We can see that. Perfect. All right, so we are here. We're going to talk about the six steps to define who you are. And what we're really looking at doing is starting. This is our starting point. This is never there. To me, there's no finish line because we are on our path. We're on our journey. So let's love it and keep going. But we are here to discover. We're here to discover some things about ourselves some new connections. 
We're here to own our personal power because who we are, like I said, is so important. So by owning who we are, that's anchoring to our personal power. We're gonna start to create those connections with ourselves. I believe that when we connect, connection always has two parts. And if I'm involved in that connection, I've gotta be connected to who I am so I can also connect to those that I'm interacting with. And we are then going to define who we are because these coming together anchor to the power of you. That is so important. What I've learned over the last 15 years being in education is there's a lot of knowledge that goes into being a teacher. We're always learning new things. We're always getting that new standard, that new curriculum, that new idea. And those are great. They help us grow and learn. But what I've learned is sometimes it takes letting go of what we know or what the book says to do or what the colleague down the hall or what the colleague across the, the nation is telling us to do and instead go with what feels right in the moment. Our ability to connect with our students comes from our heart, not necessarily from the book. Now there is a combination there, but I think going within is a piece that's so often missing because we know we're here, go read the book, go try it out, go do this, go do that. It's very action-based, that's important. But where's the action for looking within? Where's the action to define who we are? Well, that's where we're headed next. So the first step in defining who you are, the D stands for declare. This is more than a decision. This is the declaration. And it's my favorite part because it is so often the part that gets missed. We so quickly jump to the doing, right? We jump to the action to do this and do that. But that can often lead to overwhelm. And we miss this step. We miss the declaring of who we are. So we're not going to miss it today. I want you to go in the chat. I want you to declare that you are so worth it. And it gets to be as easy as you want. Start with I am. And for me, it would be I am Lindsay. That's where you can start. Let's shout them out in the chat loud and proud. If you want to go more, add some flair to it. I'm Lindsay and I am so worth it. I'm Lindsay and I am here because I deserve to be here. You add what works for you. Let's see it. Yes. Look at these. Yes, I love it. Oh, the exclamation point, smiley faces. Yes. See, and every single one of you is adding your own flair to it. And that's what's so important in this declaration. It is owning it. It is here. I am are two of the most powerful words that we can use. And whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, whenever I'm starting to lose sight of myself, that is my anchor. I anchor to I am Lindsay, because no matter where I am or what situation I'm facing, I can always trust back into the person that I am. So now that we've done that, what's our next step? Our next step is to envision. So when you are defining who you are, I say go big, go bold. Whenever I think of the word envision or expansion, I, my arms automatically go out. I automatically think, what do I want? What is it that I desire? So think about those things that you desire. And what often happens is our brain wants to try and limit us. Our brain wants to try and say, yeah, but you're okay where you're at. You're good, you're good enough. Well, I don't know about you, but I am done with good enough. I'm great. I wanna be more than enough. I want to be so full of passion and purpose and joy and excitement that, that I keep envisioning what's to come. What's bigger? What else can I learn? Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's, that could be overwhelming in and of itself. So what do I do with all these thoughts? Put them on paper. My favorite tools are pretty simple. They are paper and pencil. Or if you're a talker, you know, your phone with audio recording. Because when we make the strategy small, simple, yet strategic, small means I can do it in less than a minute, less than 30 seconds. It's quick. Simple means I don't really need any materials. I don't have to go get the thing. S strategic means it aligns to you. So what do you envision? Go big, right? Get aware that awareness is essential to knowing what comes next. So what comes next? Well, now we focus in. So if you picture a ball cap, I like to use this analogy. 
if you wear a ball cap, it kind of limits your view. You're a little limited. You are focused. So sometimes I'll say, take the hat off to myself. So you're looking too narrow at this situation. I'm too hyper-focused. So we take the hat off. That's the envision. If we are trying to define ourselves in the midst of a challenging behavior, let's take the hat off and envision all the reasons it could be happening. If I want to envision more for my life, what is out there? But then I focus in onto one area, one goal, one, one domain, one thing that I want to take action on. That's the focus. So then we put the hat on. We are focused with what is going in front of us. So then what, right? Okay, so we went big, we narrowed in, now what? The I stands for identify. And what we're identifying is our values. Okay, so what means the most to us? So go ahead and put into the chat, when you hear the word value, I like to play that like word association game. When I say value, you say, go ahead and put it in the chat. What do you value? because what you value is really gonna help you identify your steps. And I love using the picture on this screen that shows you've got the bricks and then you've got a layer over it. You've got that almost facade. What we're hitting at here are those bricks. What is it that's your foundation? What is it that on any given day, on the best of the best and the most challenging, what do you still value the same amount? Look at this, yes, family, connection, happiness, fun, empathy, gratitude, connection and helping others. These are powerful. Knowing what your values are is gonna help you say yes with confidence. It's also gonna help you say no with confidence. And I don't know about you, but that no can be really challenging. But one thing I know when I define who I am is I have to be able to commit to who I am. I can't conform to everybody around me or I'm going to say yes to everything. And the last thing, and I'm ultimately then saying no to me. So when I know what I, what, what I know, when I know what I value and I can identify those things, then I'm able to define what it is I want and desire from the inside out. Part of that going inner, that inner work, is noticing. That's what the N stands for here. And it's really getting at noticing your feelings, noticing that shift from joy to frustration, noticing that shift from maybe anger or sadness to curiosity and wonder, and recognizing that you very well may be feeling more than one emotion at one time. But what I've learned is the thoughts we're having, the feelings we're feeling, and the actions we take those align to who we get to be, which means on any given day, I notice what I'm feeling. I don't fake it. I don't force it. I feel it. And if that means that, that tears are present, then tears are present. If I'm angry, I ask myself why. For me, I can feel it right at the back of my neck. And as soon as I get that awareness, I open up, I expand and say, what's going on? Because if I give my power away to that emotion and I get angry and I start complaining and, and venting and doing the things that, that naturally we do, then I'm not looking at it through that solution-oriented and to focus that really helps serve me. What I often will ask is, is this serving? And if the answer is yes, then go with it. But if the answer is no, then I notice and I take that next step I know to take. The last part of this process is constant evolving or constant evolution or constant growth. Using the word that aligns to you, right? We've got this last E. So what does that mean? Well, we've done these steps. We've declared that we're worth it. We've expanded our thoughts. We narrow in on a goal. We identify an anchor to our values. We notice our feelings because we know they're powerful. And we continue to evolve. And recognizing that part of evolving might be step by step. Sometimes it might be going back a couple steps to then jump a couple forward. Sometimes it might be taking, hitting the button and whoosh, I'm gone. It can happen that fast. But what I know to be true 
is that this comes with trust in who we are inside and outside of the classroom or inside and outside of our role as educators. See, I used to define myself solely by being a teacher or an educator, but I've learned that who I am is, is Lindsay. And part of Lindsay is the role as a teacher the role of a behavior specialist, the role of a coach and a speaker and a mom and a wife and a daughter and a sister. And I could go on forever because they're all a part of me. But at the end of the day, when I'm looking for growth, I'm looking for personal and professional growth because to me, they are no longer separate. To me, they continue to go together, which means that I'm anchoring every day into this statement that I'm better today than yesterday and I will learn through today to grow into tomorrow. When we talk about defining who we are, this is not a one and done process. This is a process we get to practice every single day by showing up, by honoring who you are, living into those values and feeling those feelings. Because those connections of thoughts, feeling and actions, it truly does not get any better than that because you are living a life defined by you not by what anybody else thinks it should be. Thank you so much, everybody. It has been a blast sharing those six steps with you. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to throw them in the chat. We will make sure to cover those later on. But I want to open it up now to Jamie and Michelle. Um, so take it away, ladies. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Uh, Jamie and I are super excited to be here today to share with you uh, a little bit about the Wellbeing BC website that um, FISA BC, so the Federation of Independent Schools Associations in BC, um, we worked together to develop this website. It's all about uh, mental wellness and social emotional learning, and it's a resource for educators by educators. And even though it was developed by the, um, the FISA School uh, Association, it is an open website. So it's available to be used by any educator anywhere in the world, and we're excited to show Showcase a little bit of that to you today and to jump off of Lindsay's amazing Define You uh, segment to talk a little bit about staff well being and teacher well being. And Jamie's going to share her screen and show you the website. Yeah. And we're going to do a little walkthrough. Yeah, we'll walk you through the website. And thank you so much, Lindsay. And you had a nice transition there too. And you're talking about taking care of yourself and then also translating to taking care of our colleagues our students, our school communities. So it's a really nice segue there. And I like to piece that you said at the beginning there, Lindsay, how it comes from the heart. And a lot of this does come from the heart, whether you're taking care of yourself or you're thinking about ways to take care of your community. And like Michelle said, this website is, is a piece of that and taking care of our community, our whole school community on uh, social emotional learning and mental health and well-being. So like Michelle said, I'm gonna share my screen so that we can get an idea about what it is that we're talking about here. And you'll see that I've got the screen up here. This is the website, wellbeingbc.ca, created by FISA schools for FISA schools, but of course, accessible to everyone. So I'm just gonna walk you through a couple areas on this website that we wanna sort of bring your attention to. Um, the main idea of this website, and I also wanna put a shout out to someone named Jenny Williams. Um, who was a really integral part of putting this website together. And she's one of the special ed teachers. She oversees that in um, the Society of Christian Schools of BC. So I know she's not here today, but definitely want to thank her for all the work she did with this website. And the idea of this website is it provides you with videos by experts uh, across a lot of them are from BC. Kimberly Shawnett Reichel is one that's a big one out of UBC. Um, we have a lot of different expert videos on here that sort of talk about different segments of mental health and well-being. And then another feature of the website is there's also videos about um, schools that have implemented this program. So the idea being that you can look through this website, get ideas about how you can work with your school to further improve mental health and well-being education in your class, and then get an idea of what schools across BC are doing to, in, and how they're interpreting different things. So here's the website. This is the front page of wellbeingbc.ca. And the first thing I want to show you, if you scroll down on the main page, um, you'll see, oh, sorry, not on the, I got to reload that. 
So you'll see here our website, um, we've got, like I mentioned, there's gonna be expert videos. So on the front page here, there's a lot of different videos that focus on SEL and you'll see Kimberly Shawnett Reichel as one person I mentioned. The reason why I mentioned her is she was also an integral piece of getting this video and website put together. And she's such an amazing resource. She's so focused on mental health and well-being and integrating that in an educational setting. And so lots of the videos are um, featured by her. So these videos here will focus a lot on well-being and SEL and mental health. Um, and then you'll also see, you know, there's some areas certainly during now this sort of COVID pandemic time, mental health and trauma informed practice is something that we're all having to engage and understand. So there's some more expert topics there. Dr. Haley Watson being another one. We have a lot of nice videos uh, featured with her on there. Another thing I wanna bring uh, to your attention to is um, the schools tab. So if you click on the schools tab, you'll see that some of the schools across FISA were featured on this, like I said, and you can check out different schools. Say if you clicked on Brockton School, for example, and I'm gonna click on that one because I work at Brockton School. Um, you'll see a series of videos here that were filmed uh, about Brockton, but also you'll notice that there are some um, expert videos as well. So. The videos in blue are the expert videos, um, and then they're associated with, oh, sorry, the green are expert and the blue ones are the in-school videos. I'm gonna show you um, another page here. Oh, sorry. Say if we clicked on one of the videos under the topics tab. So see if we go to the main website and click on topics. Another way to access the different information on the website is through this tab. So you can go through the schools tab or through the topics tab. And if you were to choose a topic here of something that you were interested in, so say if I wanted to look at positive influence of peer mentors, you'd click on that and it would bring you to a page where you have the expert video here. And then below that is a video that's um, done in one of the schools. Another place that I wanna bring you to, if I go to topics again and developing a positive school climate, you'll come up to this page with our expert Kimberly Sean at Reichel here. And what's important as well is the school connectedness action guide. So this is a resource that your school can, can click. It'll bring you to an external website um, where you can put together different ways on how you can support your school. You can work together as a team to support your school um, in implementing important programming. So the website has videos of experts, but it also brings you to different resources that you can engage with. Another important tab to check out is using this resource. When you click on that tab, it'll bring you to an explanation of how you can use the resource and how this website works. So you'll see that there's instructional videos. Some of the videos come with viewing guides. A lot of infographics are included in this website. And then there's also a growth plan and toolkit and at the school that I'm working at, me and my student services team are working on developing a scope and sequence for social emotional learning from junior kindergarten to grade 12. And so I'm gonna be referencing Wellbeing BC many times to be looking at the school toolkit to help me make sure that we're meeting the steps we need to create a really well-rounded program. So these are the different things that you can check out on our website but my favorite tab to click on is the topics tab because you can check out different videos here on lots of different topics to engage with your staff. And when Michelle and I presented some of this video or this website to schools across FISA, what we did is we had them, we gave them a specific video within one of these topics. So say we're gonna focus on, sorry, SEL programs. What we did in small groups is we had schools watch one of the expert videos and then we broke out into breakout groups and talked about how does this apply to the school that you're in and how can you implement this type of learning into ways to support you and your staff. And that was just a way that we kind of got conversations started um, at our schools and, and with educators across the province. Michelle, is there anything else you want to add to this? Yeah, I think just to highlight the fact that um, there is a lot of rich content on the site. And um, when Jamie and I were asked to start presenting the website to schools and educators, we, we looked at it through that lens of what if I was looking at this site for the first time, what would I be able to take away? And 
we were a little overwhelmed by how much was on there. So we thought, um, you know, let's look at it. Like Jamie said, whether it's one video that you're watching as an individual uh, for your own professional development, or you're bringing it to a staff meeting so, so that it generates some discussion with your colleagues, or you're looking at the macro piece, which is the school-wide toolkit, where you're assessing um, how your school's doing across the board in working with students and teachers to create social emotional learning and content and mental well-being programs and initiatives in your school. There's really no kind of right way to use it, but there is a right way to use it for you and for your school colleagues. So we just encourage you to get into the website, look around, l watch some of the videos. They're all three to five minutes it's long, so they're not. Um, you're not committing to a big time uh, frame. I've been kind of setting the intention for myself to, when I'm having my morning coffee, to just watch a video every day and kind of reflect on, so that I've been familiarized with all of the content on the website. And it is actually really accessible, really easy to jump in and start using today. Yeah, so Michelle, you mentioned uh, the school toolkit. And so I just I'll show you that again here. There's a video, a little intro video kind of explaining how you can use this website, because Michelle said the idea is you take the concepts and things that are research based evidence based. We know that it's best practice, but weaving it into a way that works for your school, because not every school is the same. And I know that people on this this group here are, are online learners. So how can you or online educators, how can you weave this in an online educator way? Because it's super important that we keep connected and keep talking about these conversations with mental health and well-being and overall well-being, even in an online setting. And so this video here would be sort of an intro video that has Dr. Kimberly Shawnett Reichel talking with Jenny Williams about how to use the website. And then, like I said, there's some really good tools to help you implement different things across your school to support all the different areas of mental health and well-being. So some important things to consider. And you also also have a spreadsheet you can use with your school, workbooks that you can implement with staff meetings to making sure you're working together as a team to really improve that community feel and lots of resources on here. So I know, like Michelle said, this website can be a bit overwhelming because there's so much to it. But start small, choose maybe a topic that you're interested in and kind of go from there. And bit by bit, you'll see there's lots of information that you can use um, and make use of with whatever works for your school. Okay. I don't, is there anything else, Michelle? I was just gonna say, Jamie and I will pop our, our emails into the chat because we actually have developed uh, a series of uh, staff meeting agendas that range from a four week, uh, over a four week time period to a six week, which we'd be happy to share with uh, you guys. If you're interested, just send us an email. We'll send you some of those. Um, and they link uh, a video uh, based on a theme that we've chosen and some talking points and some questions and some ideas to generate that conversation, um, whether that's with your department in a smaller group as, as colleagues or it's in a larger staff meeting uh, setting. So just feel free to uh, reach out and we will share those with you. Okay, do, should we pass it over to Brad and Livia to keep this conversation going about well being? Absolutely. Michelle and Jamie and Lindsay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Brad Hughes, elementary principal in Ontario, Canada, and I'll switch it over to my uh, co host with the most from the West Coast to introduce herself to Liv. Thank you. I really appreciate just being here. I feel so honored to be in your presence, and I just wanted to acknowledge that we are on sensitive territories um, and you know every day I look out and I I just feel so blessed to live where I live and there's so many things that we have to be grateful for um, I know the weather turned a little bit today but it's still every day is a gift and so thanks Brad um, would you like to start a conversation Brad yeah I'd love to and, and something that uh something we're moving towards live is is helping uh folks here reflect on and and begin to make a commitment to move from intention to action and so we started off the session with Lindsay helping us to center ourselves 
as really the heart and soul of the influence that we have and the ability to serve uh, in our spaces. Um, and Jamie and Michelle moved on to resources that we can use to both uh, inform ourselves and sustain that, uh, that growth towards you know, personal wellness and to keep that engine running, keep that fire kindled. And now Liv, you and I are gonna challenge our, uh, our uh, conferees here to reflect on how, what it takes to, to find the time, dedicate the time or to make the time to move from that positive intention to action. A commitment to, uh, a commitment to wellness and well-being uh, is necessary in order for us to serve others in the way that we want. So Liv, in your, if, if you reflect uh, in your role and in your spaces right now, what, what kind of commitments have made the biggest difference to you? And they may not be complex, they may be simple, uh, simple, small steps. I am very centered around um, connecting with others. And every day I feel blessed to have so many connections and to have the blessing to work with amazing educators and to, I, I know I'm in a different situation where I actually get to see kids in person every day. But when I when I look through the lens, like it's like I, I put on a set of glasses and I see people as gifts and that I have that opportunity to make a difference in their life every single day through every single interaction. And that's kind of how I see things. And, and uh, you know, there's more than one way to say the same thing, right? So. Uh, I think it's just always going back to what, what do I kind of bring back to what Lindsay said, what do I value? And I value relationships, I value connections. And it's through these, these opportunities that I center myself in. And I know that when I connect with others, that helps me. I, I so agree. And a small step that I continue to take on a daily basis, Liv, is to is to center relationships as um, uh, as some factors that restore me, sustain me, protect me. Um, and as I try and navigate sort of the ins and outs of school leadership and family life, and of course, all of the stresses and real peril of, of living uh, in a global pandemic, uh, it's relationships that may be the key. It, it may be the key to uh, reassuring ourselves that we're not alone, uh, reassuring ourselves that uh, others have our backs. Uh, and if we are feeling isolated, if we are feeling lonely, really it's only th by connecting that we get connected. Uh, we connect by connecting. And so uh, I'm curious if any of the folks joining us here, either in the chat or want to pop their, their mic on, let us know, you know, based on what you heard from Lindsay and based on the resources that uh, Michelle and Jamie uh, sorry, yeah, Michelle and Jamie shared, what might be a small and manageable next step that you can commit to, uh, say, before the before a week's time is, is up? Can I jump in for a second, Brad? Please do. Great. I, I just want to say that I mean, yeah, connecting with yourself and connecting with others. That's kind of how we can all get through this pandemic together and, and how we kind of going to get through life in a positive way together. And one thing that I've done with my staff is I put out a challenge for them to make a goal of walking or running. They choose a distance 50K, 75 or 100K within the month of April. And, you know, during this time, it's safe to go outside for a walk or run. And but we're all doing it together online by tracking it on a collective spreadsheet, but we're all getting outside and being safe, being active. But I've heard the conversations in the hallways or you know, people texting each other, or I see my colleagues when I'm out for a run. And although we're doing it all independently, we've really connected on it. And it's a free, easy, fun thing that everyone can do to be together. And not only does it help your physical well-being, but getting outside in nature and walking and knowing that sort of everyone's doing it together has also really been helpful for I think the collective mental health. And so that's kind of one thing for me, I've committed to running hundred K by the end of next Friday. So my definite next step, what you're saying there, Brad, is I'm going to work on getting to that hundred K. I think I have like nine more kilometers to go. 
Well done, Jamie. And uh, Lindsay, I was reflecting on something that you shared in our last session uh, back in February, and that's it had to do with simple versus complex. And sometimes we think that the answers have to be big, but uh, what's your take on simple versus complex, if you can refresh our memories on that? Yeah, absolutely. So I have training in uh, behavior analysis. So when I think behavior, that's that tends to be where my, my mind goes. And one thing I learned through that through that process, through that practice is if, if our brain thinks something's going to be hard or complex, we won't do it. We will we will take the easy route out. We will we will say because we want to we want to be successful. And if I don't have the ability to believe I can be successful, that confidence, that success metric, then it's going to be easier to not try. Because if I try, I might fail. I might make a mistake. I might not believe in myself. And really, I see the same thing with our students. So I actually recommend start super simple because you're going to show yourself you can do it. You're going to have that success, which builds your confidence. Therefore, you're going to want to keep doing it because it's gaining you. You're, you're getting that result you were looking for, that, that, what, that thing you were desiring. And I think it, you see it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It's not meant to have 100 steps. It's what can I do right here in this moment? Liv, I wonder if you'd be willing to share uh, with us a little bit about your thoughts about vulnerability. This this came up in our uh, in our in our session with Lindsay and with Michelle and Jamie in the chat. That is, you know, vulnerability can be risky, uh, especially in, in in our different walks of life and our different roles. We may feel called to be the authority or the the knower and the doer, the person that has the answers. But I really think that there are incredible opportunities when we give ourselves permission, especially within tough times to be vulnerable to and with others. And I'm wondering if you could comment on, on your thoughts there. Yeah, it kind of brings me back to um, Mark, I can't remember his last name, but um, in, in, in that, the, the, to have the permission to feel, right? That, um, to remind ourselves of that. and. When I think of vulnerability, I automatically think of authenticity because sometimes, it, like you were saying, Brad, when we're in a leadership role, we almost want to seem strong and we want to hide some of our emotions and what's really going on in our minds. But sometimes it really is those moments of vulnerability when we are able to show what really is on our mind and on our hearts, that that's when you actually really connect with kids and, and other people. And I, I still remember that time that I, you know, shared something about my, my pet dying. And I think that like yesterday, we had some things happening in my classroom where there's some mean things happening. And during our community circle, I, I was actually at a loss of words. I, I, I told them, I don't even really know what to say. I'm, I'm very upset about, about what I'm seeing because it's not, it's not anything like how we've felt all year. And you know, tears came to my eyes and I, I, I didn't want to put on that brave face, but, and I think it, it was because of my vulnerability that the other kids were also willing and able to share that they felt upset or they were, they were um, not understanding why these things were happening. And I think there's such power in that because we are being authentic. And so that's why I, I mean, like vulnerability and authenticity are kind of two words that are, are blend really nicely together for me. What about you, Brad? If I could, I want to just extend your thinking too, and, and that's around emotional literacy. And you said giving ourselves permission to feel. Uh, and, you know, as educators, but also community members in, in all of our different roles, um, it's essential now that we're just honest with ourselves that, you know, as you as you pointed out in your, in your, um, in your anecdote there, we may just need to give ourselves permission and space to to work through what we're feeling and experiencing. Um, and it's essential that we, in all of our roles, give ourselves permission to ask for that space from others. Uh, it's okay to defer an important decision or defer a conversation un until you've had a chance to process and gather your thoughts and you can come back on it. Um, the other thing that that does too is it, is it models the way forward when you demand the space needed for you to bring your best self to any situation, you're modeling for others that they can do the same thing within your communities and spaces. So emotional literacy, literacy I think, is, um, is a key shift that, you know, the pandemic demands of us. And I think that 
uh, as distance learning educators as well, I, I think that um, the, the more we fill our toolbox with emotional literacy capacity, the easier it is for us to monitor and moderate within our online environments and also give our students, even at a distance, even interacting through screens, uh, the permission to feel and be uh, and, and learn to monitor their emotions um, and to let us as educators and advocates know how we can support. Yeah, and so I, I remember the name is Mark Brackett, you know, his work around emotional literacy has, has been, I think, gaining a lot of momentum in the last few years. And uh, I think it's to, to teach or to understand for ourselves, but also when we understand it, we're more able to support other people and, and the, the students that we support as well. Can I pipe in? Please. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I was a drama teacher and, uh, and high school. So I, I, and then I went into my own business and parative edge anyway, and I do all of this work. Right. And so I really break down, how can we support, uh, students and I go, I, I go to the vulnerable. I go to the ones who are often victimized, who are a little different. And I go, you know, if you could, at the end of the day, if you could look in the mirror and say, I did something kind for someone, you could feel super good in your own heart. Let's go with that as a, as a motivation because giving and being good to others, it's, it's proven. It makes us feel better than giving to ourselves. It's, it's a proof. So, uh, so then I, sh I teach them how to do it. I go, you don't have to become best friends with the person who's a victim. But when you walk by them in the hall, you could just say something like, oh, I saw your presentation. It was good. Just acknowledge another person. You could look at them in the eyes and go, good job. And they, you don't, what you don't know is the power that you have for good. That kid could go home after a day where they were targeted by other people. Think about that one thing that you did and it could put a little bright spot in their heart. So I try to get them to do good by imagining that they are actually lifting someone's heart and bringing someone out of a sadness. And maybe, maybe they could actually save a life because it's that powerful how we behave with others. So I teach them how to do it. I did this with a group of grade four or fives that there was an issue with bullying. I was called in to help with them. And I then, my mother died, I went off and I had taught them about compassion and about how it could be just put your hand on someone and just, just so I'm here for you, right? And then um, I told them about my mother. I sat there and the girl next to me put her hand on me and said, I am so, so sorry. And it was such a, an, a moment of learning. And it, I just sat there and I don't mind crying because I'm a drama teacher, <laughs> I don't cry. And so I just sat there and I said, oh, did you just see what she did? And I was like, wow, that ever make me feel good. And I'm like, now, if you could just do that for one another. And when I taught them this, I asked them, I had been back after a couple of weeks when I taught them a few things and I said, how's the playground now? And they said, they felt like a dark cloud had been lifted. Is there any better gift in the world than hearing that? So it's not like I'm tooting my own horn. I'm just saying it's not so complex. It's the little, little things we can do to help the community support each other more. And that equals better learning. It's all better, better, better. So that's my story and I will stop, but I'm very, obviously I'm passionate about this because they need to learn what it looks like because so often it's just not modeled for them. Jody, sharing forward your experiences is so important because we're, we're all as educators in the, in the business of, of, of modeling those desired behaviors and approaches so that others can learn from them and to join us. Um, it reminds me of something that uh, my colleague over there, Livia Chan, often says, and that's you, you, every interaction is an opportunity to uplift others and that you never know which interaction is going to make, as you said, Jody, uh, a life-changing uh, difference for someone. Uh, when we talk about uh, making or finding the time to restore ourselves so that others can be restored and served, a, a challenge that I'm putting out to people more frequently is to let no one pass by unacknowledged. That is in, in all of your spaces and all of your interactions, whether it's in your neighborhoods or your workplaces, uh, challenge yourself to let no one pass by without a smile or some eye contact, a wave, a nod, a greeting. Um, and you know that, that's something that, that, um, that drives me. And I think, it, come, I think it, it has an element of surprise to some people. And I, I think that surprise and, and welcome surprise is actually a love language. It's actually a gift that we can share. And, and, and Livia, 
um, this might be a fantastic time for you to reflect on and, and share your thinking on uh, the gifts of all of the gifts of language, uh, action, and behavior. Would you be willing? Yes. Um, so I, I see a lot of things as gifts, and I think when we when we do when we look at it in that frame of mind, uh, we have more gratitude, right? You know, when you just like yesterday was Earth Day. When you when you actually stop and see our Earth as a gift, you're able to kind of go into that frame of mind of gratitude, and so. Uh, I often, like, like Jody was saying, those, those words you receive, those simple words of, I am so, so sorry, were truly gifts. And you think about as teachers, you know, or, or anybody who receives physical gifts, how many times you, you know, you, 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 you receive them, you feel good, but it's really what the words and the cards that you receive, those are the gifts. And, and I see them as like those gift of words means so, so much. And so one thing that I had challenged uh, people to do is that when you receive those gifts of words is to actually almost meditate on them. They were written for you. They were chosen. There's so many words they could have chosen. They chose these words for you. So breathe in the words, meditate on them. It's almost like digesting them. Let them sit on your heart. Let them sit on your mind. and just truly enjoy these gifts and how I you know one thing I really wish I did was to keep all of those love messages from my students from my 22 years I didn't and now I really regret it I, I kept some but I really wish I kept all and you know those are the days when I know um, I know some people they have what binders some people have a whole wall where they just put it and your tough days look at the wall look at and you, you can see and you know you're making an impact. Every single day you're making an impact. And the proof is in the words, right? And it doesn't really matter. You pick up one of those notes. So I, I keep mine um, electronically now because I'm a much better filer electronically. So I go into my document and I can see all of these uh, gift of words that I've received from people more recently. And it, it just fills my soul and reminds me of okay, I'm here for a reason. I am making a difference. I can do this, right? I can attack or approach whatever it is I am thinking that is difficult or, or hard. And just, you know, going back to authenticity. And, and for me, I lead with my heart and whatever my heart and my mind says I need to do, I do. And I, I, I honor that and that through kindness and gratitude, you can't go wrong, right? If, and thinking that in every interaction, you're, you have that, it's, it's an opportunity, but actually it's a responsibility, right? As, as educators, we have a responsibility. Yeah, who, who, who wouldn't want a little more kindness or um, a little more kindness or gratitude in their lives, Livia, and, and in their spaces? And um, I, just to, to circle back, I noticed that we're getting to 4.15 and we're going to wrap up our session, but you know, something that that continues to resonate with me whenever I talk with Livia and Lindsay is that we are the gift. We are the gift. Each of us in our uniqueness, in our spaces, in our homes and communities and schools, we are the gift that we bring to every interaction. Um, we are irreplaceable in our potential to influence others' lives positively. And once you give yourself permission to be the gift and to recognize the gifts that you have to share with others, whether it's words, actions, gestures. Um, anyway, I truly believe that we are the gift that we bring to every interaction and we are irreplaceable. So um, I, I just wanted to, to take a second to, to thank Lindsay, Livia, Michelle, Jamie, and, and all of you for the opportunity to, to connect and interact. And I wanted to just uh, to see if there are any final comments or questions or uh, contact information that we could provide. If I'd like, to, I'd like to just say one thing that, that Lindsay often shares and it's stuck with me ever since I heard it. And um, she, if Lindsay, you wanna just quickly talk about mirror moments and it's just looking in the mirror and saying, I'm awesome. Or looking in the mirror and saying, I am enough. Or looking in the mirror and fill in the blank. Yeah, so just like that, just like we started today by that declaration by saying, I am. It is so powerful to say that, but it's also super powerful to do in front of the mirror. 
So you are saying it to yourself, you're reminding yourself, and every time you pass a mirror, which is a lot of times in the day, uh, give that declaration and keep your energy up because you're always focused on being the best version of you on that given day. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to kind of wrap this up. We have the next session starting. Thank you to everybody that was presenting today and sharing so much good information with all of us. I have the link to the next, um, the, the last session uh, in the chat for you to join. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you today and uh, inspiring as always. Thanks, Lindsay, for your podcast. Brad, for your podcast. You're welcome. Brian, Thanks for yours. Yep. I was going to say, Brian, you, 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 literally, you literally walk the talk, my friend. It's, it's just amazing. I, I can't tell you how energized I am whenever uh, a good news, bad news gets a shout out on Fresh Air at Five. It's like, it's, it's a gift. You are the gift, my friend. Thanks. Yep. You're, you, you guys that. are in my queue, and I, I, I have to make sure I don't listen to you both on the same day so that I, you know, I spread <laughs> out the love through the week, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah too good too good good okay take care we'll see you, you at the demo slam opportunity okay okay Bye, Jenny, have... and thank you yeah no problem i'm gonna end the session so it's gonna close up now thanks right a lot bye-bye okay.